Today, I want to honor my inner weeb and veganize one of Japan's famous comfort dishes called Tamago Kake Gohan. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> um, the first time I came across this dish was when I was binge watching JMKN 58710's channel. Um, unfortunately, I never tried it in its original form, not even when I wasn't vegan yet. Although I have always wanted to for as long as I can remember, I was never brave enough to try it because I was not sure whether the eggs I had access to could be consumed raw like the ones in Japan. And that was at least a decade ago when I had no clue of specialty stores importing certified ingredients. So too bad for me because my will to consume animal byproducts no longer exists. I have to accept the fact that I'll be missing out on the original taste, but I can appreciate the combination of runny yolk saucing your dishes. I've definitely enjoyed quite a few runny eggs in my life before, so if anyone feels the need to remind me that I'm missing out, I'll definitely believe you. And while I've given up eggs for quite a while now, I do think that this improvised combination was passable as a yolk substitute. Mainly with the help of nutritional yeast and black salt, also called kalanamak. When it comes to the yolk component in vegan eggs, turmeric is the most popular and accessible natural food coloring, while the unctuousness is replicated using pureed pumpkin or carrots. I'll link one example in the description box so you can have access to a recipe. In this particular video, I did mine very differently, so take that as a warning because I used none of the ingredients that I've previously stated. So what happened was I ran out of turmeric, which wasn't an issue because I always found it overpowering for my taste, and I tend to prefer it in curries. Instead, I used another spice I thought was softer in terms of fragrance, which helped me obtain the remarkable orange yolk in Japanese eggs without any distinctive aroma that could counter the egg-like flavor. And that spice is called anato powder, which I bought from a Vietnamese mini-mart I was very fortunate to have access to at a walking distance. On the day that I filmed this video, my fridge was near empty. I had no carrots or pumpkin, deary me, so what did I use? Soy milk powder that I reconstituted with very minimal liquid to obtain a thick soy cream. So did improvising this combination scare me? A little. What I would normally do if I was too lazy to cook carrots or pumpkin was use the pureed form from jarred baby food since canned ones always leave me with so much leftover that go bad quickly. I'm sure I'm not the only vegan who's tried that. Why aren't we allowing ourselves to overtly enjoy baby food as a shortcut? I don't know. I think they're amazing for sauces and egg replacements since most are vegan friendly and free of any pre-seasoning. Just choose the correct one, of course. By the way, the last ingredient you saw me sprinkle in was a bit of sugar. Yes, I did add sugar because my soy milk powder is unsweetened. A hint of sweetness added helped replace the result you'd obtain from actually using carrots or pumpkin. I also think a little amount of sugar helped harmonize the sauce just so that it doesn't straight up taste salty and nutty. I have not tried using any sugar replacements such as stevia or monk fruit sweetener, so I'm unable to tell what result you'd obtain from using either one if you don't consume sugar, so my apologies. I'm not allergic to soy products, but I am aware that not everyone can consume soy. It can definitely make following recipes a little bit more complicated. In this case, feel free to experiment and have fun. If I was in that position and didn't want to use carrots or pumpkin, I'd be daring enough to use some unsweetened and smooth nut butter. I actually might try that in the future, let's see. And if anyone tries to shame you for being selective and being in control over how you explore your creativity, um, screw them. It's your food. But I only say this in the context of dealing with food allergies. However, please do not forget to appreciate the culture and the people you're inspired by, even if the end results belong to you. Traditional recipes are always the starting point of your future creative concoctions. And a lot of these comfort meals 
were always developed from economic struggles, so they hold a lot of historical and sentimental values. It's always important to be appreciative and thankful. More importantly, these recipes are always developed by parental figures that couldn't afford luxury for their loved ones and could only express their love through creativity. Since I just went on this tangent, I probably shouldn't even call what I created a tamago kake gohan anymore, since tamago literally means eggs. Um, well, this is harder than I thought it would be. I'm a bit embarrassed now, but given the addition of the furikake at the end, I'll probably end up titling the video furikake gohan. I just thought it was still important for me to state the inspiration behind my dish. And while furikake only refers to the dry condiments you sprinkle on rice, it will still be the name that I stick by since I did sprinkle some on top and no actual eggs were used in the dish. I know I swore to myself that I wouldn't upload until I finished my final term, but I was partially editing this video a week before school started. I might as well try to finish it while the workload is still light. And although this video isn't a recipe, I still enjoy journaling how I experiment and play around in the kitchen. Not only have I been able to save money by being better at prepping and storing produce, but I've also been able to improve from previous creations. Just recently, I've been able to adjust my mochi puffs so that it can be closer to a traditional shoe pastry. An updated version is definitely on my list of future projects. And as we reach the end of this video, if you've managed to make it this far, thank you very much. I hope you have yourselves a lovely day. Bye bye!